Hello and welcome back to Tinker Talks Guns. So recently I've been testing the Underwood Extreme Defender 32 ACP bullets, which look like this. They have kind of a, almost a Phillips screwdriver shaped head on them. And they seem to produce, even though they don't expand, they seem to produce hollow point like disruption of tissue. And I'm a curious sort of fellow, and I thought, what if I ran some of those through my 308 resizing die, which turned out to be a non-trivial exercise, believe me, solid copper is a lot harder to resize than a lead cord bullet. But what if I resized them to 308 and loaded them in 30 carbine? And as you can see, I did. And I thought, first of all, is it going to cycle? And second of all, what will the effects be on gel. Well, there's no load data for this, of course, so I had to use load data for a heavier bullet, which did not work out quite as well as I'd hoped, but we'll get back to that. Before we get too far into the weeds here, I'd like to thank my supporters on Patreon. All of this costs money, and your contributions help more than you know. Also, um, thank channel benefactors like John, who donated these bullets as a reloading component, and all the other many, many people and organizations who have helped me with this stuff. So, so I had to adapt a load from a heavier bullet and discovered using a 4220 IMR 4227 powder that I couldn't actually fit much more powder than a standard load in this casing. So I went with what I had and was hoping for, um, was hoping for a velocity well over 2,000 feet per second. I didn't get it. And uh, the results in gel are very interesting. Now, being the Muppet I am, I forgot to hit the record button when I took the actual shot, so you will not get to see the wound track magically appearing in the gel in a single frame. Um, <laughs> I did fire through four layers of denim, FBI protocol, into gel. And uh, let's have a look at the results of that. So as you can see, there is immediate and significant disruption. And of course, the denim had no effect whatsoever. It did pull a little bit into the wound for the first half inch or so. And you can see the typical spiral pattern of disruption that these create. And uh, that carries through right up to about 13 inches. So that's really quite good. Now, it did pass completely through the block and five inches into the backup block. So there's 21 total inches of penetration in gel. And um, yeah, that's, um, that's a pretty good result. So as you saw, the results were pretty good in one respect. Now, this load makes 455 foot-pounds of energy, which for 30 carbine is not much. Um, the 110 grain jacket and hollow point loads, or the 100 grain, excuse me, jacket and hollow point loads I tested earlier made 871 foot-pounds. So this is significantly down on energy. However, energy is as energy does. At close range at least, or for up to medium-sized game, this would probably do the job quite adequately but I don't see a lot of point to it because the 100 grain hollow points are much easier to deal with and do more damage. Also, they're going to maintain their energy farther out, you know, inside 25 yards. I'm sure this is fantastic. But once you start getting out further from the muzzle, the lighter bullet is going to shed velocity faster, and unless it has a significantly higher initial velocity, that's going to impact downrange performance in a bad way. So, interesting experiment. Not really worth it. But still, one doesn't know until one tries. Now, in the fullness of time, I may try this with some different powders. Maybe get better results in the velocity department. See what happens. But for now, I'm going to stick with 100 grain hollow points. So, 
Hope you liked the video. If you did, please click like. Subscribe if you want to see more content of this sort. Happy New Year. I hope this finds you well. Stay safe, take care, and I'll talk to you again real soon.